Welcome back to my YouTube channel Elliot Wave Principal. I am Shaheen and in today's video we are going to discuss gold and silver. Uh, we are going to try to find where is the next largest swing so we can actually take benefit of it. Uh, while there exists completely a, a lot of confusion among retail traders, uh, especially as far as fundamental analysis is concerned, we are trying to use a bit of fundamental analysis and there's one uh, one very special signal among fundamental analysis. We are going to discuss that special signal in fundamental analysis and we'll look at our chart as per technical analysis and as per Elliott wave analysis to see where exactly the next major trend is long. So a couple of days ago, uh, Fed did say that they are going to increase their interest rate a couple of more times in 2023. Yet we can see on a daily time frame that although initially price came up, came down and then the price initially reversed sharply. So what's actually happened? This is actually a, a major a major sign from the from the market. Let me go into an hourly time frame, and we can see the impact of um, the day. So this is the day when the Fed came and they said that okay they're going to increase the um, basic interest rate a couple of more times. Uh, basically 0.25 percent uh, more at least a couple of times within 2023 and the market reacted like okay that means that the yields are going to go up and uh, the u.s economy is doing fine and the gold shall go down and it did go fine the very next morning uk came up with the news that they're going to increase the interest rate um, uh, and they did and that's what we have seen it this is what the fundamental analysis is saying it but once again the fed policies are way heavier they impact much heavier as compared to uk's alone policies uh, this is actually not uk this is uh, european union uh, yeah ecb came up and they said they're going to increase the uh, the fed and uh, the interest rate so it's pardon me it's not uk it was ecb european union their bank they said okay they're going to increase the interest rate and we know that the fed's impact on the market is much much heavier than the European Union on its own. So it's just it's just a basically lame excuse from the market. We already know from the from the market structure that we are seeing the investors or the retail traders uh, traders in general are not believing that uh, Fed is in control of the market forces. So we can see from this and let's say that you believe in fundamental analysis and things are going hand in hand in hand right now we can see that that whole movement has been reversed already. So giving us a very, very classical signal in which the price movement occurs in a completely different direction as compared to what fundamental analysis says. And that's the beginning normally of a huge, huge move. And that's what Elliott Wave Analysis is indicating as well. So this is just a bit of fundamental analysis. We look at what the patterns are looking at it. So if you are familiar with Elliott Wave Analysis, once again, I... Uh, you may want to label it differently this is how I have labeled it uh, this correction is essentially be to be labeled correctly I believe that this correction is a zigzag and then we this is a W wave this is an X wave and then we have seen a, a flat correction making the whole wave 4 correction as a double 3 wave instead of a lot of people are considering it as a triangle so I believe that the correction ended over here when correction ends over here we see a very beautiful uh, structure at the end of the move and I was I had a position taken already because if you take a triangle Okay, let's say this is a triangle you can say okay. This is an a this is an a B right over here We can see that this is a C D and E in that case. This is a three-wave move and does not make any sense All right, so both things could be possible But right now I'm considering that wave four ended over here and we are seeing an ending diagonal on the smaller time frame which is also the fifth wave of the larger move we are going to zoom out to see what the pattern is occurring we have right now uh, gone above the last very s the smaller sub wave but to be sure exactly that what we, what we are looking right now is correct we have two important swings here right here we need to turn back to uh, swings uh, uh, swing chart where you can actually see the other swing on a daily time frame and it's more reliable than the hourly time frame swings so th this is the daily time frame swing and we need to a uh, chart and we need to see what major swing is happening right now so if we see this particular move right now we can see that this kind of is a correction and this is a larger move so 
this the move stayed bearish and this is still within the previous move so the swing would still stay bearish and when prices goes above right over here this one over uh, which is 1982 1983 area that will be a clear indication that the swing daily swing chart on the daily move has turned bullish and that would be the definite indication that we are going to turn um, bullish on the on the chart so this is very important we are to use daily time frame as far as swing analysis itself is concerned although there are a lot of bars that we have seen the positive bar right over here bullish bar here here and over here still till the actually top is concerned is not taken that still remains that okay the swing is still bearish and it still remains within the range which is right from the top to the bottom right over here so we have to come out which is what Elliott wave analysis is indicating that we have completed our bottom right over here but right now we are talking about confirmation when price goes above 1982 that would actually confirm that our analysis on the smaller time frame on an hourly time frame chart is correct on a larger time frame the pattern looks like let's have a look the whole impact we can see that this is wave 1 and 2 and this is wave 3 right over here and this hole is wave 4 and wave 5 I will once again show here on an hourly time frame so we can actually see what's happening on an hourly time frame and let me just zoom out a bit on hourly time frame so we can actually see the correct labeling so this is the labeling that I've given wave 1 2 and wave 3 right over here and wave 4 and wave 5 and on, on this particular movement is wave A, wave B and wave C making a whole move structure as a correctional A, B, C structure or a 3, 3 and a 5 structure so this correction is complete right now and that should generate um, if the structure is complete that should generate a move as stronger at least of as this size right over here so this is good particular move um, I'm going to bring the chart um, sorry let's keep it over here uh, so that we don't forget and I wanted to see the, uh, the actual price target and we can use I guess we can use this price range okay so starting from over here we can see that the price range is on itself is $245 so the, in the at least the at least string that we are expecting from the bottom right over here is at least 250 bucks but it can definitely go somewhere around 400 bucks from the bottom right over here so if it goes 250 bucks then we are still increasing quite a bit of move from over here this is what the next swing uh, is indicating and I believe that we have created a bottom on a shorter time frame which is a 1925.57 let's have a look on a four hourly time frame to see if it can give you some um, labeling right over here and you must be thinking if this is wave 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 that completes wave 5 it does unless you're expecting wave 5 to be an extended wave in that case this is only wave 1 of 5 this is wave 2 of 5 and we are in the initial stages of wave 3 of 5 that's what the labeling is exactly for my analysis of gold right now so we can say that the wave 1 ended right over here which is uh, wave 1 of 5 and this is wave 2 of 5 and then you're expecting a stronger move up inside it with 3 of 5 4 of 5 and 5 of 5 so this is what I'm expecting we need to see the uh, correct the labeling uh, uh, I mean uh, this is not minor we need to see if this is I would say intermediate okay and we can definitely yeah let's leave it in that for that color so now the labeling is clear on the on that chart I'm expecting that once again that the correction is complete right over here and we are to move a larger larger swing on the bullish side in gold and uh, the reason is first of all we have seen a classic sign from fundamental analysis giving us an indication that the price in gold has moved completely within in one day of a very important news coming from Fed that they're going to increase the interest rate by at least 50 percent by the end of 2023 the market did not believe that news and we can see that from the right from the bottom that inflation is a very very important as far as the price of gold is concerned uh, investors are not believing whatever the Fed is saying and uh, we had a couple of uh, we had banks crashed as well and there is a possibility by that if the interest rates uh, goes up there's also a possibility that real estate could crash 
we have a major company that could crash because 0.5 percent looks nothing probably to retail trader it's a tremendous amount of uh, pressure if you are a company right on the edge so whatever the concern is the Elliott wave analysis is indicating that we are going bullish yet on on gold and on silver so and this is what my analysis is indicating that we have completed the move on the bottom side but to confirm that analysis we must go beyond 1983 okay let's have a look at silver and see what silver is indicating silver is showing even beautiful price movement as compared to gold the reason is because uh, when price is going up we uh, we haven't seen coming down again so the structure actually completed that this is an a b and c structure has completed uh, way before the one in gold so the gold one completed just a couple of days ago but silver has already created a bottom and we can see that the prices although came down over here reflected pretty back uh, pretty sharply from this uh, from this low as well we are going to discuss this uh, but let's see if we can actually use the hourly time frame uh, uh, let me bring this in to all right so right now we're expecting for silver to continue to be a making a bullish move and quite a significant one all right so the last swing once again if you look at the analysis once again Elliott wave analysis and uh, the labeling itself I'm considering this is the wave one and two and three and four right over here making the whole move look very uglier but in that case if it's a, this is a leading diagonal then that definitely wave four can come within the territory of wave one all right so do I do I'm well aware of it but I am also considering that this is a bullish move we have completed a correctional structure over here and this is the bullish move right over here and I'm expecting a wrong a run in silver longer than this one right over here because normally wave 3 are strongest waves and I'm expecting that we are going to see a stronger wave within uh, within silver as well so it's also a possibility since wave since gold is also going to show wave 3 of wave 5 and wave 3 normally is the strongest wave there is a poss possibility that we can actually see a stronger move uh, much stronger as compared to $250 that I mentioned earlier in that case the move in gold somewhere should be around 400 to $450 per ounce in gold and in silver we have to expect somewhere prices hit $33, $34 per ounce so that will be quite a significant move in silver as well uh, I'm going to go on hourly time frame to see uh, if we can actually spot the uh, the patterns on a smaller time frame so here is the pattern that we have seen which is an ending diagonal itself that we are considering within gold but this 5 wave structure is basically wave C of uh, this correction and we can see that wave B which is we are considering wave B right over here has gone way beyond and the start of wave A giving indication that the bullish price movement is quite uh, amazing right here so we have already gone up right over from over here we have seen a correction from over here and then we have seen the bounce back pretty sharper as well giving us indication that we have completed the structure and we have not only completed the structure we have also completed a smaller uh, wave 1 and a smaller wave 2 uh, within the wave 3 within the larger wave, wave 3 or 5 so let's come back and uh, we can actually make a this is the start of the structure and this is wave A wave B right over here and wave C and we need to go and change the um, so intermediate primary I would say we will make it minute oh, here we go and we need to understand that this is wave this is the start of the structure and this is wave 1 right over here and this is wave 2 right over here and then we'll continue this wave 3 4 and 5 on the upside okay so this is what I'm looking right now that we have two proofs uh, first of all the structure itself is amazing wave B has gone wave beyond the start of wave A and the reversal from the bottom is also amazing sharper move which is giving me more con more confidence that we are actually uh, bullish on gold and bullish on silver now a lot of uh, mm, mining companies are not going in hand um, gold and silver minings are not showing 
and the uh, the price movement that we have seen in gold uh, at least in silver for gold we haven't started the yet the bigger move yet uh, but a lot of them uh, companies are not actually yet showing the reason because they are running their own structures they're running through their own waves and I bet that we are going to see a bit of difference um, within gold and silver and gold and silver mining companies and whatever the reasons underlying reasons may be we are actually seeing that the structures are different let me see if we can actually find a company and we can look at it so one uh, we can let's have a look at GDX So instead of just by looking at an hourly chart, let's have a look at a daily chart and see what's happening on a daily chart. Okay, we have seen uh, this particular movement, wave 1 and 2 and wave 3, uh, but there's a, there's a question right over here, that either this correction is complete right over here, or this correction is yet not complete. If the correction is complete right over here, then can, can say that this is wave 1 and 2 and we should move upward. There's a more concern on hourly time frame, because the structure that has followed right after uh, the impulse move this one right over here so in gold if you look at it when prices were doing so we actually did create a lower low as compared to the previous low alright in this case it looks like that GDX has already completed the structure right over here which actually started from over here. So an A, a B, and a C structure, I believe, is complete. So I think this structure is uh, complete as the one we have seen in silver. So let's do the bit of labeling for GDX. Maybe it can help us a bit. And then we'll also do a lab um, an alternate labeling. So this is the start of, start of structure. Let me go right over here. So this is the start of the structure we are considering this as wave 1 and this as wave 2 and this as wave 3 and this as wave 4 uh, do understand that here within wave in the within this structure wave 4 did not go and actually entered into the territory of wave 1 so this is not a leading diagonal the one that actually ha we have seen in gold is actually a leading diagonal because wave 4 has entered into the territory of wave 1 within wave 4 right now since the, we are seeing a correctional structure right after an impulse move giving an indication that this move is yet not complete and if this move is yet not complete and we have seen four waves already that means that wave 5 is going to be an extended wave simple as that so we can see that our wave 5 would be really, really completed over here I'll, I'll do the labeling um, I'm, I'm in price targets in a bit but let's do a quick analysis of this and then the fifth wave actually starts from over here this is our wave one and it looks to me that v wave two is already complete and we are going to see a sharper move on the upside wave three and a move somewhere around over here wave four and this is wave five completion wave five or five completion let's go back and see if we can actually change the setting so this is intermediate is fine okay this is intermediate but this is not an intermediate uh, this is going to be a primary one so this wave is primary wave here we have so we have a bit of labeling in front of us for GDX and does that mean all of the stocks are actually making the same structure no we'll have to look at the individual stocks one by one uh, I'll probably do a quick analysis of couple other stocks as well especially if you're in North America um, or in Canada and uh, then definitely it's useful so this is what I'm looking for right now we can first of all look at the structure all we are seeing is a high a higher low as compared to the risk low and then we have seen a high right over here and then the low one is much higher as compared to the previous low and then we have seen a clearly bullish swing and the low that we are seeing is much lower higher as compared to the previous one so a staircase structure 
is in progress and nothing is uh, indicating that we are bearish on this structure okay so that's if you can draw a trend line definitely that trend line is helpful but just by looking at the structure itself we can see that the structure is bullish and uh, the corrections are whatever are just corrections the technical corrections I'm bullish on the structure and let's go on hourly time frame and we can go on arrow right over here and we can make a smaller smaller wave labeling as well here we can say that we have one ended right over here and wave two ended right over here and then we are going to continue a wave three and four and upward of wave five <coughs> pardon for that and let's have a look and see the labeling once again this is uh, not the intermediate but binary okay and just a rough estimate let's say that wave 3 is stronger uh, in that as compared to wave 1 and it is the strongest wave 1.618 is a the per something uh, is the estimate that we can use so this is wave 1 length of wave 1 and then we can say okay uh, where is this is 1.25 and then we can add another and let's come let's do this instead of make complicating so this is one right over here hundred percent of the pre uh, of the wave one and then we can add okay one point six one eight percent somewhere around here so this is an estimated target which is forty nine dollars uh, and fifty cents for GDX uh, for the next swing that we are already in okay in that case we are going to see wave 3 and wave 4 somewhere around here because when once we this is the natural resistance right over here right so we should cross that resistance and we can we are asking that the pullback is normally possible uh, normally happens for the market to make sure that there are actually buyers on this level as well so initially you should cross that resistance prices should follow and then there are, should be buyers keeping the push um, prices up all the way in there, this area so this is for the GDX we can see that we have already seen a lower right a, a lower end in there as well and in a day or two we should actually see the prices go above this one which is 35 37 so this is one let's have a look at the one I was looking at is you know MTA okay Metalla it's a pretty good example oh it did go up beautiful beautiful I look this is I did not look at it and see what has happened I was I was following Metalla and this is what has happened okay beautiful, beautiful. amazing let's have a look on the daily time frame and we can auto it okay Now Metalla is giving a bit of different indication. Uh, first of all, we need to understand uh, that the low that we have created a year here, this low is much lower as compared to that one. All right. So we need to understand that uh, the structure within this one is in Metalla is different as compared to the one we have seen in gold itself, and as compared to what we have seen in GDX. All right. I let me see if we have GDXJ right over here. Uh, that will be helpful. Okay, we have GDXJ. Well, let's have a quick look at it, and then we'll come back at Metalla. Okay. Okay. Although we have created uh, a low right over here, which is higher than the previous low, but this structure is is yet not complete. All right. It looks to me that we have seen uh, uh, the similar pattern within this one. Uh, in GDXJ as compared to what we are seeing in GDX I think the both the structures are same and we can cons clearly consider this as wave 1 and 2 wave 3 and wave 4 and once again this is actually entering into the territory of this one so once again the the pattern that we are seeing is the leading diagonal pattern uh, within GDXJ as well and this is wave 1 right over here and wave 2 I would see is complete 
all right in that case the smaller wave one and a smaller wave two is complete and we should actually be seeing price movement upward metalla however is showing different structure let me quickly label this instead okay so we can see the start of the structure here and wave one and two and three and four and the wave five is way up over here and we can see that uh, this is going to be not minor but this is our primary degree okay and we can see that our smaller wave since this is a structure correctional structure all right in this case then we are looking into the fifth wave extension so this is wave one and two and we are looking for wave three and four and wave five all right once again price estimation let's come uh, to one we need to look at the degree first so this is not primary it's going to be intermediate okay here it is okay and let's come that okay wave 3 is 1.618 percent of wave 1 in that case we can say okay wave 1 is 100 percent equal or, or at over here at this point and it is going to be 1.618 percent somewhere over in this region okay so this is giving us uh, the estimate for uh, the price target is in GDXJ for wave 3 uh, meaning that the price would actually go from 37 all the way to 54 uh, that's uh, pretty much more than 50 percent uh, price increase somewhere around 50% price increase in GDXJ in next I would say couple of months all right that's looking pretty interesting and let's have a look at Metella okay let's go back Metella and see how Metella is doing so if if we look at both of them GD, we have looked at GDX and GDXJ remember that GDXJ is actually representing for uh, junior miners okay and GDXJ is actually main miners and they are not junior ones so here we can look at Metalla and this trend line is very important let's have a look at the trend line that you're seeing it will give you some clue of what we're looking at it so you can see how uh, oversold uh, the prices in Metalla is all right does that mean that's an excellent opportunity I would say at least at least a very good buying point <coughs> at least a very good but time um, buying point Metella is a streaming company and it's an amazing I think they have a lot of contracts and as soon as the price of these contracts would go up we can see a dramatic increase in the price of Metella uh, we need to pay attention though uh, in the previous structures right over here so it takes a lot of time for Metella to uh, you know gather forces and when it does prices move sharply up and then we can see that we have seen an amazing price movement happen uh, especially in the later stages of the market we need to pay attention into that okay let's have a look on a uh, daily time frame now okay I would say that this I was trying to label this uh, on the while on the go, okay, and definitely a bullish move. But because we have normally labeled it as wave one and two, and we have done it wave three, and then wave one and two, things are not looking um, like. Especially on this price movement is also different this price movement is definitely definitely different uh, as compared to the one we have seen before so let's call it this one it's pretty easy we can uh, definitely do that let's call this the start of the structure and we can say this is wave one right over here up okay and this whole wave structure is our wave two in that case we are looking for a stronger move on the upside wave three and wave four and wave 5 
the only trouble is that this time duration is a lot of time duration for as compared to V4 the one we are looking for it okay I'm gonna do some of the analysis uh, I was wondering about Montala and it l requires more deeper analysis it requires some of more techniques as compared to just by labeling at it um, by just by labeling it so I think Metalla is in a good buying opportunity uh, we have completed an impulse wave wave one and uh, ABC is con uh, complete where we have an A, a B and a C structure <coughs> let's see that we are actually looking uh, for Metalla that this is the structure in that case this should be three wave structure a three wave structure and this should be a five wave structure right in that case one more m move to the downside is expected let's have a look at a four hourly time frame okay and okay there's a good possibility and that one more movement is on the downside could possibly be uh, let me actually this is an ABC movement this is the start of the structure this is wave A this is wave B and this is the wave C so we need to be sure uh, that the structure is complete if this is an ABC structure in this case we can clearly see that this is the wave start of the structure of wave C wave 1 and 2 and 3 and wave 4 in that case one lower move on the doubt side is yet to come okay we can see that there is a resistance coming on at this point right over here okay if price can actually go beyond that resistance on the upside that will be giving an indication that we have actually completed the structure right over here and in that case we will actually carry on so, but the larger structure stem seems like this wave 1 and 2 uh, we are very either have completed wave 2 or we are very close to the completion of wave 2 and then we shall carry up for, uh, for Metalla I hope that I was able to provide some value to the uh, to the analysis and um, hopefully things would actually move really bullish and strong uh, as for our uh, analysis in Aliyev is concerned wish you good luck with your trading have a good one and bye bye